helps you, you can add something else. You can try to add like Mira. It can make you feel better if you chew Mira. I added Mira. After adding Mira, after some time, then another friend tell me, you can add something else. Add Pombe. Pombe is a beer. You drink, then you feel like you are high. So with time, I found myself, I have taken all kinds of drugs. I found myself, I'm a smoker. I found myself, I'm a, a, a chew mirror. I found myself, uh, I steal people money. I found myself, my life was destroyed completely. So it reached a time whereby you need money to buy drugs because you have to use money to get it. And I was in school. So what was the option that I had? A group of colleagues, which we normally chill with them, told us now is the time for us to get money. So let's find a way how we'll be getting money. That time I was influenced with drugs. My mind was always high 24 seven. So the only option which we had now is to look for sources for us to get money. And we were still in high school. So we had to, we created a plan whereby we'll be stealing people's money. For example, we used to go in town, we hijack uh, a, a, a bus, we take it some point, then we rob people, we take telephones, we take money for me to be able to sustain myself. Because that time I needed money to wear, I need to wear good jeans, I need to wear good trousers, I need to have money for drugs, I need to have money to impress women. So this life continued for quite some time. We go, we steal, we get money, we sustain ourselves. My mother tried to warn me several times, she told me, my son, why don't you be like other son? I've raised you in a Sunday school way. Why don't you just walk in a way that other people are walking? For me, I never knew good by then. I told my mom, you leave me alone. I want to live my life. I want to enjoy my life. I'm too young now. This was the kind of the feedback I was giving to my mom. The worst moment in that situation is whereby a friend told me that we should go to steal somewhere somewhere in Kibera there. At that point, the mission was successful, but when we wanted to escape, the, the security rang the alarm. So by that time, the security had closed all the gates because the mission of the security was uh, to catch us, to destroy us, and to kill us. So unfortunately, my friend, uh, when he was trying to run, he was the first one to be caught. So he was, he was taken down by the security. I was still running, but on the background I can hear that they have, they have, they have already uh, get one of the thief. So my friend was beaten, beaten thoroughly, beaten, beaten, beaten. Me, I'm still running, they're still following me up. They're saying, there's another one, look, he's running there, he's running there. Unfortunately, when I was trying to make a corner to escape, I just heard one of the security, like, he was, there is something he was holding in his hand, then he just hit me on the chest, pa! I knew it's finished. They pulled me, they pulled me up to where my friend was. When I was looking at my friend, I saw my friend was dead because the blood was all over running down. People are surrounding him. Now people say, now we are finished with this one. Let's start with the other one. Now they want to start with me. Actually, they really beat me thoroughly. They were beating me up, uh, others with stones saying that kill them, kill them, kill them. These people have stilled here for many times. So that time I knew that I'm finished. That is the time that I used to, I, I had to have flashbacks to remember all the friends that were inviting me to church, the friends that was coming to me telling me stop stealing. Now I remember, they're beating me, but my mind now is far away. My mind is just thinking all the opportunity that I had. I remember when my mother was telling me, my son, why don't you be like other sons? My son, why don't you be a good boy? I remember these flashbacks. Then I told myself, because now I'm, I'm thinking and now I'm just hearing stones uh, uh, saying, get away, get away, get away, because someone comes with a stone, pa! He punched the stone on my body. So now it's the time I said, God, I know I've sinned and I know where I am. I don't have any other option. I can see, now I'm just see, saying the prayer inside the heart while they're still beating me up. I tell God, God, give me another solution. Give me another chance. And I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. Actually, when I make the prayer, it's like 
Now things were becoming worse. Now they were saying, bring the paraffin. This one is not dying. They wanted to burn me alive. Bring the paraffin. Bring the paraffin. So the paraffin came. When they brought the paraffin, when they wanted to pour the paraffin on me, to be sincere, my people, is when I had a gunshot. The police came from nowhere. They, 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 they shoot up. Pa, pa, pa. The police were saying, leave these people alone. They need to be taken to where? They need to be taken to a police station. The, the, the crowd was saying, no, we have to kill them. We have to kill them. So when the police started shooting up, at least now the crowd dispatched. After the crowd dispatched, now I tell God, God, thank you so much. Because I knew that was God. God was using those policemen to come at least to rescue me. Not because I was a, a good boy. No, I was a bad boy. So the policeman wanted to take me, take me to the, to the police station to do whatever I'm supposed to do. So the police came, they took me, they took me to the police station, to the, to the hospital. I was treated. I was later paid the things that we stole. Now after coming back home, now I started to remember that the situation that I was in is only God who helped me out. Now, my friend now who used to come, there's a friend who used to come to me before in my home telling me about church, telling me to come church. Now is when I saw that, no, if God really helped me from that situation, I need to give God a chance. I need to, 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 to go to this friend who used to tell me that I should come to church to see what is going to happen there. So I took a step and said, now, if God helped me, now let me go to church. Let me see what God has for me. To be sincere, when I came to church, I was received well. There was a program of the youth there, YPG, told me how I can be able to help, my, how I can be able to improve myself, how I can be able to improve, uh, uh, to improve on my relationship with other people. So I decided to give God a chance and to take part of this movement. There was a chain of prayer which was supposed to be there Monday to fight about my financial life because I didn't have a job by then. I was just came to church, no job. I had a family. So I told God, God, first of all, give me the strength for me to be able to overcome all this addiction that I had. Because I was, remember I used to be a thief, I used to be a smoker, I used to be drug addict. God gave me strength slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly. I found myself that I've stopped drinking, I've stopped chewing mirror, I've stopped uh, masturbation, I've stopped sleeping with women. I found myself clean completely. And then I told God, God, you have helped me. Now I want to get a job, at least for me to be able to depend on myself. Because earlier, I was stealing people money. Now, God, I want you to help my financial life. Actually, I participated on Monday, uh, uh, financial life. I prayed about my financial life. And it didn't happen immediately, but with time, things started changing gradually. With time, I took my CVs. I took them to the company which I wanted to be employed. It wasn't easy because my education was not that much enough for me to be able to get a job in big companies. So I took my CV there. When we went to the CV, we found that people have many CVs, big CVs. I was just telling my God, my God, I'm coming to apply a job, but my CV is too small. But I believe through my faith, I'm going to achieve. So to be sincere, after staying like a week, I got a phone call. Hello, are you weekly for Teka? We want to employ you to a company, come to this place and report. That's when I've no, I know that God has answered my prayer. I went. I, I got the new job, which was the job which I wanted to do. I wanted to do job job of telecommunication, which deals with IT, deals with configurations. God gave me a job. After all, being faithful to God, because after God gave me a job, I promise I'm going to be faithful in my tithes. I told God, God, you are the one who has given me this job, and I want to be faithful to you. Because earlier I was not faithful. I was still getting money, eating the way I want, doing my things. But after getting a job, I told God, God, you are the one who has given me this job and they want to be faithful to you. I started separating my 10%. Each and every month, I separate my 10%. I bring it to the house of God. God has done wonders in my life. Now, I'm not the same guy anymore. Now, I serve as an assistant in the Universal Church, and it's been a blessing to me. Now, I, I use my life to help those who are, in, who are in addiction. I use my life to encourage those who are struggling to come out of addiction. Now, I can say that I'm a completely different person. Above all, I received the Holy Spirit, which has helped me to overcome all the challenges that the devil is trying to throw in my ways. Now I can be able to pray for myself. I can be able to pray for someone who is going through the same addiction I was going through. And furthermore, God gave me a wife, and I married on this altar. 
so I can say my love life is blessed, my financial life is blessed, all of my life completely is blessed, and above all, I give glory to God because I have the most precious gift, which is the Holy Spirit. Let us unify our faith in prayer. If you can stand up from where you are, stand up and let us talk to God. Close your eyes. My God, in the name of Jesus, in this late afternoon we come before your presence and we ask you for you to stretch your mighty and powerful hand to set free this person who has been oppressed by problems, sleepless nights, sicknesses. This person who has been a, a victim of witchcraft, may you come to deliver and set your people free in each and every household where they hear our voices. Let there be freedom in this afternoon. Let there be deliverance. We call upon you for you are able to set them free. You are able to deliver them. My God and Father, arise and set this person free. Do not allow this person who depends on you to remain in the same situation, to remain being oppressed by the devil. But may you set them free in this afternoon. Rafiki Yangu, from where you are, call upon God to set you free. Tell him that in this late afternoon you want to see his power in your life. You want to see his hand in your life. Tell him that you believe that he is able to set you free. He can answer your prayer for he has the power to change your situation. So make your prayer now, Rafiki Yangu. And invite God to answer you. Invite Him to deliver you. In this late afternoon, pray to Him now. of your people in Jesus name we pray you who believe say Amen Rafikiang you can take a seat for a short while we are going to share something with you in the word of God and we are going to make a strong prayer short after a prayer for deliverance a prayer to release you from the chains of the devil before we read this verse in the, in the book of Judges chapter 8 my question is what are you tired of? Pastor David there are people who are tired of fighting. Every time when someone is tired of fighting they give up. I have seen people who have walked out of their jobs. Who have walked out of their marriage. People who hang themselves. It is because they got tired of fighting. And also, there are those who get tired of their problem. Hear the difference, Rafiki Yangu. Those who get tired of fighting, they are ready to give up. 
They are ready to throw in the towel. But those who get tired of their problem, they say enough is enough. I cannot accept this problem in my life anymore. I'm going to do everything in my power for me to be free from this problem. So they will put all their effort. All their strength. Because they are tired of their problem. So my question is what are you tired of? If you are tired of fighting Rafiki Yangu, this is not your service. I'm calling those who say pastor, I am tired of my problem. I cannot accept being a victim of which anymore. To spend my money on medication. I am tired of this problem that I'm seeing in my family. This problem in my finances. I am tired of living a life of depending on others. If you are tired of your problem, hear what it says here, Judges chapter 8, verse 4. The Bible says when Gideon came to the Jordan he and the 300 men who were with him crossed over exhausted but still in pursuit. You know what Rafiki Yangu? Gideon was not tired of fighting. But he was tired of the Midianites. The enemies who were oppressing them. Making them to be impoverished. And he said I'm not going to let them go. I'm going to pursue them. I will overtake them. And I'm going to finish with them. This is the spirit Rafik Yangu. From where you are, we're going to make a prayer of revolt. A prayer of you who say, Pastor, I am tired of the problem that I'm going through. And I want a solution. Stand up from where you are now do not be tired of fighting be tired of your problem lift up your both hands to heaven if you can and close your eyes with your eyes closed the same God who gave Gideon strength to pursue his enemies until he destroyed them. He anoints your hands right now with his power to destroy the enemy that you are going through in your life. Or the enemies that you are going through. Your hands are no longer ordinary hands. They are anointed to defeat your problems. You can place your hands on top of your head. As we are going to make this strong prayer. Think of this problem that you are tired of. You are tired of sleepless nights. You are tired of being a victim of witchcraft. Your family members not succeeding. Think of this problem now. As we are going to pray for you. Do not accept this problem anymore. Yes, my God, in the name of Jesus, from your altar, I command right now the evil spirit that has tormented this woman for a long time. I command the evil spirit that wants to bring divorce and separation in the marriage of this person. I command every demon, every force of darkness that was sent to torment this person. This person cannot sleep well at night. She has nightmares. I command the spirit of nightmares, the spirit of bad dreams, 
wherever you are in the life of this person wherever you are in the body of this person i command you to lose power i command to come out from the life of this person the spirit of bad luck the spirit of misfortune the spirit that was sent from the house of muganga i say come out right now wherever you are satan you are the one that is behind the tears in the life of this person you are the one that is oppressing him you are oppressing her with suffering come out right now everything that you are doing in her life in his life it ends now everything that you are doing in the life of this person in the family it ends now you are the one that brought an incurable disease you are the one that brought a terminal illness i command you now come out from the life of this person the demon that gained access in the life of this person through rituals through a vow that was made against this person someone made a ritual in the graveyard someone made a ritual in the mountains in a cave i command every sacrifice that was offered on the altars of the devil to destroy the entire family to be broken right now wherever you are satan your time is over in the life of this person in the body of this person in the family of this person i say come out right now receive fire and come out from the life of this person come out from the ways of this person in the name of jesus in revolt rafiki yangu rafiki say with me lord my god In the name of Jesus I am tired of this problem in my life in my family send your fire your holy fire and burn all evil in my life in Jesus name Rafiki yangu in your own words. Kwa maneno yako wewe mwenyewe. Ask God to send his fire. Muombe Mungu atume moto wake. Ask God to destroy the works of the devil. Muombe angamize kazi yote ya shetani. Do not make a weak prayer. Usifanye ombi dhaifu. But make an aggressive prayer. Ombi la kushambulia. Against your enemy. Dhidi ya adui yako. Against your situation. Dhidi ya hali yako. Go ahead right now Rafiki yangu. Endelea sasa Rafiki. And fight. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo wewe shetani au na mamlaka tena au na nguvu tena au na nafasi tena katika maisha ya watu wao katika familia hii katika nyumba hii mtu huyu amekuwa kijikaza afanye biashara lakini amekuwa kipata anapoteza badala ya kupata faida kwa sababu kuna uchawi ulifanywa mtu alikopa pesa kwa hiyo biashara na amekuwa kimaisha ya mtu huyu kwa biashara inasambaratika mtu anapoyoma amejaribu kutafuta kazi kwa muda mrefu anaambiwa hapana lakini kuanzia leo tunakukataa shetani watu wao wamechoshwa na wewe au na nguvu tena katika familia hii chukua matatizo yako yote mikosi yote laana zote uchawi wote visirani ambao zinaandama watu wao katika jina la Yesu Kristo umeshindwa pekedea kuganya vrago vyako vyote tunakuchoma sasa hivi chomeka popote ulipo uchawi boni fanywa kupitia mavazi yao yes kule mashambani mtu alienda kwenye mto akafanya ushirikina kufunga familia hii wasifanikiwe lakini kuanzia leo tunakuamuru toka katika maisha hii toka katika familia hii toka katika njia zao kwa kazi zao kwa afya zao na usirudi tena katika jina la Yesu yes in the name of Jesus Satan you cannot remain in the life of this person from the old i command every evil i command every witchcraft that was done under the sea that was done at the banks of the river i command you satan to come out give up the life of this person you are the one that is behind all the failures and frustrations in the life of this person in the life of this man you want him to be a defeated man you want him to live in frustration i say get out the spirit of suicidal thoughts the spirit of depression i say get out all addictions in the life of this person in the body of this person get out 
and enter them no more in the name of Jesus from where you are rafiki yangu toka mahali ulipo rafiki in strength kwa nguvu kwa nguvu rafiki yangu strong sema mungu wangu baba katika jina la Yesu tuma moto wako uchome na kuharibu nguvu zote za kiza nguvu zote za shetani katika maisha yangu sema mungu wangu nimechoka na maisha ya kuomba omba maisha ya uchungu maisha ya machozi sema wewe shetani umeshindwa uko chini ya miguu yangu ninakukanyaga sasa hivi sema katika jina la Yesu ondoka shetani enda kusimu Now so receive your total deliverance right now. Pokeo ukombozi wako kwa ukamilifu sasa hivi. Feel yourself becoming light. Jesus ukiwa mwepesi. All the chains of the devil have been broken in your life. Nyororo yote ya shetani yamevunjwa kwa maisha. The chains of addiction. Nyororo ya uraibu. The chains of misery. Nyororo ya fedeha. Of failures. Nyororo ya kushindwa are broken in your life. Receive now a solution. From the altar. We declare a new beginning. We declare your complete freedom. In the name of Jesus. You who believe. Say thank you Jesus. Amen. Amen. You are free Rafiki yangu. Do not be tired. Take a decision that you are going to be a fighter. You will not be tired of fighting, but you are always going to be tired of your problems. Now I want to address you You who say pastor I am tired of my financial problem. I am tired of being the one that stretch my hands and borrow. My relatives and friends cannot take my calls anymore. Because they know that when I call I'm to ask something from them. I never call for me to offer them anything. I'm going to make a prayer. But more than my prayer. Rafiki yangu you must not be afraid to challenge the altar. You must not be afraid to plant a seed on the altar. Before we make this prayer for your financial life, I believe that you are free. But when it comes to your finances, there is no strong prayer more than giving that will bless your financial life. You take a look at the banking details as we sing this song. Let's go. those who are victorious wale ambao ni washindi in their financial life kwa maisha yake fedha they are not afraid to challenge the altar hawaogopi kuwekea madhabahu changamoto after this prayer meeting baada hii baada ya maombi you are going to send your offerings of challenge utatuma sadaka yako ya changamoto you are going to send your vows utatuma nadhiri zako through the details that you 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 took from the screen of 
your phone or your gadget kupitia maelezo ambayo umeshua kwenye screen ya chombo unachotumia kutazama from where you are i want you to lift up your hands in the way to receive kwa kama ulipo nataka uinue mikono yako kwa njia ya kupokea and from the altar we bless you toka kwa madhaba au tunakubariki we declare provision tunadhibitisha mahitaji yako na timizo rafiki yangu it is only god ni mungu pekee who is only able to rebuke the devourer akwa na uwezo ya kukemea roho mwaribifu in your financial life ndani ya maisha yako ya kifedha through your faithfulness kupitia uaminifu wako be blessed right now rafiki yangu barikiwa sasa let the windows of heaven open upon you acha milango na madirisha mbinguni yafunguke god provides for your needs mungu anayekimu mahitaji yako your financial life is no longer the same maisha yako ya kifedha irudi kuwa vile tena from the altar we declare provision toka madhabahu tunatangaza mahitaji yako yanatimizwa if there is any curse kama kuna laana yote if there is any witchcraft kama kuna uchawi wote that was done in, in your hands ambayo ilifanywa kwa mikono yako we break it right now from the altar tunaivunja sasa hivi kutoka kwa madhabahu and we declare transformation na tudhibitisha mabadiliko we bless you nakubariki in Jesus name katika jina la Yesu amen amen rafiki yangu believe in this blessing amen amini kwa ili baraka soon after you are going to send your offerings and your vows utatuma sadaka zako na dhi zako baadaye before we make our last prayer for the chosen ones ni maji ya walio chaguliwa it happened in the time of gideon ilitendeka nyakati za gideon that those that god chose wale ambao mungu alichagua When they went to the fountain of Gideon, walipoenda kwenye shemichemi ya Gideon, they left the water. Walikunywa kwa mikono yao. They did not lie down on their belly. Wakulala kwa nyeo kifudifudi. They did not bow down. Wakusujudu. And God separated them. Na Mungu aliwatenganisha. They were the 300 chosen of Gideon. Walikuwa 300 wa Gideon waliochaguliwa. And we are saying you separate your water. Na tunasema pia wetenga maji yako. That we have been blessing from Wednesday. Ambao tumekuwa tukibariki kutoka Jumatano. So that when we partake of it, of this water, napokunywa hii maji, you will be among those who are chosen. Tutakuwa kati ya waliochaguliwa you having the water is not enough rafiki yangu kwa tuna maji rafiki aitoshi because you can even have a drum of water pia unaweza unaweza kuwa labda na drum ya maji but if you are not faithful to god lakini kama wewe si mwaminifu kwa mungu if you are not ready to hear the instruction of god kama uko tayari kusikiza maagizo ya mungu that water that we are blessing is not going to be good for anything hiyo maji ambayo tunabariki itakuwa nzuri kwa chochote the condition is for you to be faithful sharti ni wewe uwe mwaminifu god chooses those who are faithful to mungu him mungu anachagua wale ambao ni waaminifu kwake this sunday you will present your tithe jumapili utawasilisha fungu lako la 10 which is your obedience ambao ni utifu wako and the offering of challenge na sadaka ya changamoto the offering of test sadaka ya jaribio and you take the picture of your ear na uchukue picha la sikio lako print it out uichapishe together with your tithe pamoja na fungu lako la 10 you are going to present on the altar tawasilisha kwa madhabahu which is representing the fountain of gideon ambayo inawasilisha chemichemi ya gideon and the picture of your ear na picha la sikio lako will be taken to ear Israel to the fountain of Gideon. Gideon. Itapelekwa kule Israeli kwenye chemchemi ya Gideon. If you have your water, kaona maji yako. We are going to bless it now. Tabariki sasa. My God in the name of Jesus. Those who have their water, we bless it right now. As they are going to partake of this water this coming Sunday. May they be among those who are chosen through their faithfulness. May you be faithful to them. May you fulfill your promises in the lives of your people. We bless this water. In Jesus name it is consecrated. And you who believe say amen. Prepare your water rafiki yangu. Tarisha maji yako. This coming Sunday, Jumapili inayokuja, we will partake of this water together. Tutashiriki kwa maji haya maji pamoja. In our morning services. Kwa ibada zetu za asubuhi. Eight Sambili. and more especially 10 o'clock na swa sana asubuhi we are going to make our last prayer tafanya ombi letu la mwisho i want to remind you ningependa kukumbusha that tomorrow saturday like ya kwamba kesho jumamosi we have prayers for the impossible tuko na maombi ya yale yasiyowezekana 9 in the morning saa 3 asubuhi 1 pm saa 7 mchana and 5 pm in the evening na saa 11 la siri right now the prayer that we are going to make Ombi ambayo tunaenda kufanya sasa is for you to put your life in the hands of God. Ni wewe kuweka maisha yako kwa mikono ya Mungu. Rafiki yangu look at this Bible. Tazama hii Biblia. Let's say it is your life. 
Tuseme kwa mfano ni maisha yako. You are going to take your life utachukua maisha yako. And the hand of Pastor David is going to represent the hand of God. Mkono wangu inawakilisha mikono ya Mungu. You are going to put your life utaweka maisha yako in the hands of God. Kwa mikono ya Mungu. As long as your life is in the hands of God. Mkono wako inapoendelea kubaki kwa mikono ya Mungu. What can yako, touch God? Nini kinaweza kuguza Mungu? What problem can overcome God? Ni shida gani ambayo inaweza mshinda Mungu? Any problem that wants to come to your life, shida yote ambayo inataka kuja kwa maisha yako, must first come through God. Lazima ikuje kupitia Mungu. That's why it is good rafiki yangu. Ndio kwa maana ni vyema rafiki for you to live your life in the hands of God. Uache maisha yako kwa mikono ya Mungu. Lift up your hands, your both hands to heaven. Inua mikono yako miwili mbinguni. And close your eyes. Nafunge macho. If you are seated, you can stand up if you can. Kama umeketi unaweza simama because you are going to put your life in the hands of God. Go ahead and make your own prayer. Surrender all that you are to him. Tell him to come and take over your life. Tell him that my life I place in your holy hands. Take over. Find a dwelling place in me. Make your prayer now rafiki yangu. Invite the Holy Spirit to come and take over. Walike roho mtakatifu adhibiti maisha yako. in your hands holy and acceptable to you take over my father and write their names in the book of life in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit you who believe say thank you jesus amen rafikiangu we are going to leave you watching a testimony of the fountain of Gideon. See how God can do in your life if you are faithful to him. Have a blessed evening. All started when I was in a financial difficulty and very stressful time for me. Uh, I lost uh, thousands of pounds and afterwards I was informed by the police that uh, this was a scam. I didn't feel like accepting the truth, but when is the truth you have to, you have to uh, go through the circumstances and I really went through this hardship and to face my family and then tell them because there was money involved uh, uh, within the family that I had to pay back. Now I became this person that has thousands, thousands, thousands of pounds debt and how I'm going to pay this back or when it's gonna finish, you know, all these doubts, all these, you know, fights, all this war was going on in my mind. At that time, I, you know, I recently met my my future wife. She she was the one who uh, took me to the help center. And here I was, you know, hearing the message from the men of God. Uh, 
I realized that there, there is a, a way out for me. We were already living an okay life because we did put things into practice, but we didn't see the fulfillment we was looking for uh, after we watch other testimonies. We wanted that to materialize in our life. So because we were new, doubts came after doubts. And then we learned uh, in, the, in the meeting to doubt the doubt. I did exactly what I was told. The moment that the tithe, the first fruit can be really a first fruit, when is the hardest time for you to give your tenth. When you say, I need to pay the things, but hold on, I have to give my my first fruits, then that is a really a tithe. Because of this, we received the vision to import the, the best quality, you know, of uh, pistachios from, from Iran. They don't usually take out the best from, from Iran to export to other countries, they keep it inside. I wanted to target the, obviously, the wealthy people because I, I knew that they know the difference, you know, because they have spare money to spend, so for them is no problem. And then after this, obviously, you know, when you have this idea and you get into the business, uh, God inspired me to get into other businesses such as property, investment in a bank, shares, several, several things that I, I am investing at the moment. It made me grow, it made me grow and I know the secret now of how to be financially really, really, really blessed. You have to grab your tithe envelope, that, what I done. I said, God, I'm here now, I done my part, where are you? Do you want to come up or you want to stay where you are? Because it seems like what you've been doing till now hasn't got you anywhere, right? You want to see difference in your life, you know? That is where I put God first. And I'm seeing the results now. Me and my partner, we're seeing the results. We're living the life that we, we, were, we were dreaming. God opened your vision to be bigger and bigger. It, it depends how much you want. God is available to, to fulfill His promise in people's life. It all depends on how much you want. And this is great for me. I'm blessed. <laughs>